like singing really quite hard Mozart. <laughs> I mean, anybody who hears that as a singer, Mozart's hard. Um, <laughs> Uh, it's just that notch higher. The music in Fidelio, I suppose the word for it is visceral. It's very emotional. It's very direct. It's incredibly beautiful, which is a sort of byproduct. But only really, it's only beautiful because it's always emotionally incredibly truthful. And although the orchestra is big, it's not sort of big in an overblown way. It's just incredibly powerful. <laughs> On the streets of Syria as we speak, there are very brave people shouting freedom, freedom and being shot at, and it's running throughout the whole of the Middle East as we know at the moment. And we've got huge demonstrations on the streets of Britain about numerous different subjects. There's all sorts of stuff going on which is all to do with the relationship between people and the state. And uh, in many countries in the world, the state is as oppressive or a lot more so than it is in Fidelia. So that if he goes on, you know, me ultra dich, I think that then your I can be just don't, don't, don't even think about it. I try to have fun if possible. I try to make it as collaborative as possible. I have a view of the overall feel of what I want, but I also want to see what's happening and try to go with what I see happening from the performers. <laughs> There are lots of reasons for coming to see Fidelia. One is that it has an extraordinary heroine. Not normally an opera, the heroine's the one who jumps out the window and dies or who kills herself because she's unhappy. Here you've got the driver of the drama who decides to rescue her imprisoned husband. So you're following a very unusual narrative in opera terms and it's told in a pretty heartbreaking way and yet it has this incredible exhilarating ending which is a hymn to the idea of real freedom and real love, and um, only music can express that. Let's go.